Well, hello. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Stephen. And as I am sure you are all doing, we are all trying our best to live up to our patriotic duty to not only protect ourselves, but to protect our fellow citizens from getting infected by COVID-19. Uh, you know what? I'm inside of my office. No one's in here. I'm taking this crap off. Sorry about that. Um, I've got, <clears throat> you know, a class three hazmat suit on order. Unfortunately, it wasn't here in time for the blog. In any event, um, this blog actually has something to do with the, uh, the flu epidemic that seems to be uh, getting everybody ginned up right now. Um, last week, I had uh, I had the requirement to go over to Turner's Outdoorsman uh, to assist a client in uh, disposing some firearms. And when I got there, the place was absolutely mobbed. Um, probably at least five times the number of customers that are normally at the gun counter. And while I was, you know, talking to a, the general manager, Ben, over there, I heard people at the counter becoming visibly irate, uh, or verbally irate, I guess would be the better way to phrase it, um, because they were now being informed that they weren't going to be able to take possession of their firearms for 10 days. Uh, we all in California know about the 10-day waiting period for those of us who have bought guns before, which was a clear indication to me that these people who were buying firearms were first-time buyers. Now, <clears throat> in a sense, that makes me very happy, right? People are going out and they're buying firearms for personal protection. On the other hand, it scares the absolute piss out of me. You have a whole bunch of people that have virtually no knowledge of firearms. Certainly, they don't have any knowledge of firearms laws. And they're buying these tools that they have no knowledge of how to use. So the thing that I, I'm going to ask all of you to do, and I consider this actually to be a public service uh, announcement, people that have bought guns recently, specifically pursuant to the coronavirus, um, if you know them, you need to encourage them. In fact, browbeat might be a better way of phrasing it, to go find a facility. If you come to us, go to anyone else. I, I really don't care. They have to go to some place and learn how to safely use those firearms. That does not mean that you put your arm around them and say, let me take you to the range. Okay, they need to get professional instruction. It's critically important. The idea that people are buying guns with no knowledge of how to use them, keeping them at home, is a public safety issue, and it has to be addressed. By no means am I suggesting some form of regulatory scheme. I'm suggesting that we as patriotic Americans, as members of the Second Amendment community, open up our arms and encourage people to go out and seek training. And that training does not have to be dynamic, tactical training. I mean, I would love it if it were the case. I'm talking right now about just basic safety protocols, okay? How to properly, you know, use your firearm. How to know the safety procedures that are associated with that. Becoming intimately familiar with the four safety rules, okay? One of the things that we're going to be implementing at Artemis, and we'll be going out on social media tomorrow, um, we are encouraging people that have, are either new gun owners or know people that are new gun owners to book an hour of training and... For the first time in our history, we are encouraging people to bring their guns with them to training. Rather than spending time on the simulators, we're going to take the hour to go over that person's gun with them so that they know the proper loading and unloading methodologies as well as the safety protocols and how to break down their gun. I think that just that basic stuff will hopefully make people realize the need for continual training. So <clears throat> if you know anyone that just recently bought, purchased a firearm, or somebody who's considering getting a firearm, steer them in the direction of a professional training organization. I, I can't stress this enough. The blog kind of goes over that. Um, again, I hope you uh, hope you enjoy the blog. I hope it is a call to arms, so to speak. Um, I want you guys to stay extremely safe. I mean, we've got a whole bunch of protocols that are being directed from uh, both our state and federal level. They're, they're good. Um, they're onerous. There's no question about that. Um, but it's something that we as Americans need to do. 
Uh, then understand something too. This is a global phenomenon. Um, we just got news this morning. Our daughter and her boyfriend are stuck in the Philippines. They had gone there on a diving trip and they have no way of getting back to Australia. So they're basically going to be stuck there now until the end of April unless something magical happens. So everybody is in a really, really tough situation right now. We have to understand that. We have to make sure that we're not doing stupid things like hoarding toilet paper. I am still beyond all understanding as to what that's all about. Bullets, that's an entirely different thing altogether. Go ahead and hoard as many bullets as you want. But, um, but toilet paper makes no sense to me. In any event, um, be responsible, be intelligent, use common sense. For the love of God, wash your hands. And above all else, stay safe. And of course, as always, train constantly, consistently, repetitively, and with purpose. This has become, for one reason or another, this has become a national emergency. Our economy is suffering, and we all have to pull together on this one. Stay safe, guys, until next week, when hopefully I have my Class 3 hazmat suit.